I'm here. What just happened? Okay, so guys, we do have a storm. So I'm gonna apologize in advance. These things might happen. Um, you know. Thank you. Hey, BT. <laughs> so just a disclaimer. We have the storm. So we may go in and out. We may go in and out, which might be bad for, you know, um, later on when I try to publish these videos to YouTube. It'll be fine. We'll, we'll edit them nice, nice and neat. How you doing, BT? How was your Monday? And how was your weekend? Yeah, Mac, it's the storm. But we'll be fine. We'll be fine. We're going to get through this together, right? As we always do. Tired. He's tired. Yeah, we're all tired. I just woke up maybe two hours ago and I'm still tired. Yeah, a lot of physical work, yeah. Better do it. But see me, I'll take a Tylenol and I'll go to sleep and be done with it. But when we have cooking streams, that used to be on my days off when I wasn't doing the cooking shows. But now that I do the cooking shows, it's like I have a second job, a part-time job. So those hours are cut short, which is still good because when I'm done, I can go back to sleep. Or I can go play a game until I fall asleep. I don't know how many times I get off early in the morning and nobody's there and we're like trying to play a game and <laughs> I'm like, I'm tired. My eyes are burning. I want to sleep, but I'll be up like fresh as ever for a whole hour. And then I'm like, it's time to go. It's time to go. <laughs> They're like, all right. And I'm like, no, but I don't know why I try to hang up. I don't, I don't know. I just want to play with my friends. I just want to play games. I just want to play games with my friends and doesn't work that way when I get off but I try anyway and I need to stop trying because it's just not working <laughs> coffee makes me crash badly I used to drink coffee um, in between like streaming and working and I used to notice that when I used to start streaming I used to start crashing while I was streaming I used to be like oh my god I'm so tired I'm already tired because of and that makes me even more tired. So then I'll be like falling asleep. I'm playing the game. Okay, but somebody just hit me. Fall asleep. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, it's the innocent. So, anybody know what Marsala wine is? That's what makes the Marsala, the chicken Marsala today. So we're gonna use Marsala cooking wine today. So this is not, so don't drink Marcella. Like don't just <laughs> don't just pour it in the cup and just drink the wine. It, it's not no. It's not that kind of wine. It's a cooking wine. Yes, cooking wine. This is cooking wine. So cooking wine is the difference between cooking wine and the wine in my bar is the alcohol content. So this alcohol content is only 14%. That alcohol content is way high. So it actually takes less to burn off the alcohol. Or you probably don't even have to burn it off at all. But I'm going to burn it off anyway. Because I'm like no bitter inside of my sauces. Yeah, so it's a cooking alcohol. So you can get cooking wine. You can get red, white, Madeira, Marsala. You can get all different kinds of wine depending on what your market has. Yeah, this is only 14%. So, um, the markets that we have down here is called Publix. We don't have like ShopRite, Thriftway, and all those other markets. We have Publix. So, this is just a regular um, store, bought, store brand. It doesn't have to be nothing spectacular unless you want to go there. You can go there. You can get an expensive Marsala wine. Some people do drink it, but I'm. It's an acquired taste, I would say. It's more so for salts. So that's where the chicken marsala comes in. It's the wine. So to make the wine, we're going to add a few things to it. Get out of here, mouse. We're going to add a few things to it. So we're going to add some mushroom. There she go, pulling out the food. So we're going to add some mushrooms. And these are baby portobello mushrooms. I'm sure you guys heard what uh, portobello mushrooms are. I'm gonna make a little trash can.
name brand names does make a difference when it comes to this because a lot of different vendors, some, some of them make their wine sweeter, some of them make them more sour, some of them make them saltier, some of them make them um, more dense and thick or more, you know, on a, on a water, on a thin side. Not the thick side. Speaking of thick, less. We got that button. We got that button. Speaking of thick. A. That's right, Nova. <laughs> so we got these baby portobello mushrooms, right? And usually when we the last time we used portobello mushrooms, right? We took the gills out of it because they were dark. And we didn't want our sauce to turn dark, right? So we're gonna do the same thing this time. I'm gonna grab us a little, my special magic spoon for later. I'm gonna grab a spoon for now. So I usually just take a napkin because this gets, these get really messy, especially on your fingertips. So if you don't have gloves on, um, this can get messy on your fingers. So you just pretty much want to take out the, the cap, this is the cap of the mushroom, the stem of the mushroom, I'm sorry. And then we're going to take the cap and we're going to take this little gill out. Even though it would be nice to have this to make our sauce darker, it leaves like a, it leaves like a residue and it leaves particles. So you just want to just take it out. You love portobello mushroom? These are baby portobello mushrooms. These are actually stuffing size mushrooms. So if we did like crab cakes or something one day, we can we can get these mushrooms again and buy them and they become, you can stuff them with like crab. Yes, and bake. Put some cheese on top of them, and chicken broth in the pan and bake them up. And oh my God, it's so good. Yeah, I have so many ideas. I, like, my mind is blown with what I can bring to you guys. So every week, I'm thinking, I'm like, well, what do I do this week without going too far? Because these these dishes, guys, are going to get really, really intense. I'm, I'm, I'm showing you guys the the easier things right now because we're gonna we're gonna be five star chefs again. We're gonna be making, eventually we're gonna be making like faux caviar with dippers and all kind of stuff. And you guys are gonna be learning a lot, a lot, a lot. Yes. We're gonna be doing all kind of stuff. I'm um, gonna be, I wanna start baking next week, desserts. If not baking, we're definitely gonna do a dessert for next week. One day I wanna do breakfast. Yeah, some breakfast for a week, some dessert, we can make ice cream, we can like start ice cream one day and then wrap it up and then we can make a dessert out of it the next time the stream, kind of like we did the pork carnitas when we started it and then finished it, yeah, so it's a lot of ideas, just make a smorgasbord, yeah. Maybe we'll do that for the holiday. Maybe we'll do, maybe we'll cook Thanksgiving dinner on stream. We're like, do like a, do like a three day special where we prep it and then we cook it. And then when the family comes over, how we serve it and all that good stuff. It'll, it'll be so much fun. Yeah, even for Christmas, holidays. So pretty much guys, I'm a seasonal cooker. So when I cook, I cook with the season. So there's a, a few summer dishes that I got to get out before summer's over, before the end of the month. Um, and then we're going to start doing seasonal cooking. So we're going to go into the fall. So that's when we're going to start using beets and butternut squash and nuts and, you know, all that type of stuff. Cranberries. Yes. So um, as I'm writing my cookbook, it's actually a seasonal cookbook. So we're gonna start that process in September. 
So then we're kind of, um, we're kind of, first of all, we're eating with the earth because number one, I like to eat what the earth gives me when it's time to eat it. I don't want to eat watermelon in September. What? Yeah, no problem. So we're just going to trim this off here. These little raggedy edges. No GMO watermelon. We want it when it's... We want it when it's when the earth give it to us, right? So we're gonna be doing beans and all different types of fall dishes up until um, up until November, and then in December, guess what? There is winter foods out there too. So don't get it twisted. Every season has a lot of different foods that is associated with that that season. And we're gonna use those to our advantage. Because number one, it's cheaper to buy things when it's in season, right? You buy watermelon in November, it's gonna be stupid expensive. But if you buy it in the summer, they have so many watermelons, they can't, you know, they gotta get rid of it, so it's cheap. So number one, we're keeping the food cost down. Now we're thinking like chefs. We're keeping the food cost down. We're eating with the seasons, right? while it's nice and and ripe, because guess what, you're not getting you're not getting no good watermelon in the winter time, sorry, just not. It's not gonna be sweet, it's not gonna be, and now yeah, you're not getting no large watermelon at that. They're not growing. Yeah, think about the seasons, guys. Like when, when, when you eat, eat with the season. Eat what Mother Nature intends. Try it, it's gonna be great. So I'm gonna be posting recipes and um, menu items ahead of time um, because then you guys, if you want to cook along, um, you can, you can go out and buy stuff. It's always a good menu. There's always um, items that you can get in your local supermarket. If it's gonna be something that we actually have to go to the farmer's market and get, um, it's kind of up to you. I'll make sure I put an alternative for that, that item, in case you can't get to a farmer's market. Because farmer's markets are not that great in the winter or the fall. You just got to kind of find all of your ingredients. So we definitely going to do some apples. So I want to take a trip to an apple orchard. Cause I have this recipe that is stuck in my head forever. It's like nailed in my head of my grandma's apple pie recipe. Just like summer collards are good, so that's a winter green. Yep, exactly. No. Mm -hmm. I love that one. A lot of those here in New York. What's that? Um, apple orchards. Oh, see, maybe, maybe that's where we'll go. Maybe we'll take a trip to New York and we're gonna go and get some apples. Just bring back home. I don't know if they'll let you get on a plane to get them. That might be bad. <laughs> I know, right? Field trip. All right, so you guys see what I'm doing with these mushrooms, right? So we got six nice sized mushrooms. Let's deal out of here. So, but that would be very nice. That is a very inexpensive trip back home. Because New York is home too. But back to Philly, back home. If I can go to my grandmother's old house and just pick up one of the apples from her tree or a basket of apples, that would be nice. But that's that's far in. Yeah, so my grandma, she owned, in her backyard, she lived in New Jersey, she lived in Detroit, New Jersey, and she had an apple tree, and it was a granny apple tree, grandma. So she had a, a granny apple tree, green apples, and we used to always eat these apples off the tree, so she had this apple pie recipe that she would always make every time we came to her house. I'm looking for these all the time. Oh my God, I bet you, 
I bet that smells so good at the apple orchard. You kids pay a hundred bucks for everything. Wow. Wow, that is that's the And you just buy your little tickets and let them run around in the apple orchard and eat all the apples. Yeah, for the family, that is definitely an extra. Definitely. To do something out of the norm. That's definitely a nice trick. So my grandma owned this tree, and it was a green apple tree. And we used to pick the apples off the tree. It wasn't um, it wasn't sprayed or anything, so we used to have to find apples on the tree. But when they would fall from the tree, we would hurry up and try to get them, like fighting over the apples, me and my brother and sister. So she used to bring out the ladder, and she used to be up there picking up the apples that she wanted, and she used to make apple pie with it. And every time she made the apple pie, Guess who was right here? Little as can be, like this, trying to get, trying to see what's going on. It was me. Everybody else was down the street at their friend's house playing Mario and all kind of nonsense. I was in the kitchen with Grandma. That's where I was. Yes. So that recipe is nailed in my head. It's the best apple pie I've ever tasted. Um. So I definitely want to do that recipe. That's one. A really, really good recipe for um, the cookbook. For sure, for sure. So we got that down. We got this mushrooms. And Marsala is not a lot of ingredients, but it takes a little bit more time. Alright, so we got our mushrooms. Right? We gotta get garlic. We always cook with garlic. Yes! <laughs> so we got some garlic, right? Got about a teaspoon of garlic. The mushrooms, when you when you're doing these, um, the mushrooms you just need about eight ounces. But because I love mushrooms, I can do them. Yes, it is. Yes, I'm, I'm glad y'all. All right, so I'm gonna take this back off. So we're gonna do two different things with this garlic. We're gonna pick some nice big pieces because we're gonna do some sliced garlic, sliced for. I'm gonna use these for some um, for spinach. So we're just gonna cut these. Let's get out this guy. All right, not sharp enough. Sharpen up your knife. There we go. Alright, so this, we're gonna chop this down. This is gonna be for the sauce, for the thick sauce. We're not gonna make this sauce the thickest of sauces like we usually do. It's gotta be a little bit more because it's gonna be really rich and buttery. So it's gonna be a little bit thinner than usual. But it's still gonna be thick because. We don't do nothing. All right, so we're gonna chop this. Let's get this guy out. He's in the bowls. Stuff him, just stuff him in there. Fill some side. All right, so now we got garlic. We're gonna do some chopped garlic. Yeah, that thick button. Doesn't have to be too dirty, but it's gotta be a little small, small size. This is in the way. I love my jewelry, but that's why I don't wear nails and all that nonsense. I don't have nails. I gotta put too much nails. I don't like stuff getting under my nails, let alone getting under my skin. So this is pretty good. So we can just go ahead and put that away on the sideline. Just a little bit, not a lot of it. Put that in there. A little garlic. Garlic. 
to the side. A lot of people say, why you don't wear garlic? Why you don't wear gloves when you do garlic? So I can do like this at the end. <laughs> Alright, so this one here, we're gonna slice this garlic. Um, usually I use a microplane, but we're not gonna do that today. We're just gonna slice it really, 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 really thin. Some people need that. I don't need that. I can slice thin and small as I want. That's the difference. It's knife skill. Knife skill. Knife skill. Really, really thin. Slices. Really, really thin. Thank you so much. I appreciate you being here and showing up. Thank you so much. Enjoy, enjoy your rest. I know I come into channels like that, so I'll be like, hi, bye. <laughs> you get it. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Finally, guys, just, just being here, but it's, I'm just happy that people kind of, even, even if you can't stay. Hosting ghost. Thank you so much, Mishi. All right, so we got our sliced garlic. Garlic. I'm gonna put that to another little bowl. A lake. So, pretty much what we're doing, we're getting everything ready. It's called mise en place, right? Get all your mise en place. That means everything is right before. Everything, everything, gathering it up, getting it together. I did not care about that garlic flavor on that cutting board, trust me. It'll come off on the chicken. Sliced garlic, right? Then we got some butter. I already chopped the butter up. I, I don't like the butter to be like, I like it to be soft. So I, I've already pulled that out. Um, so the butter, you'll need like four tablespoons of butter. And I think I remember showing y'all how it's the tablespoons. If you want to measure it easily, you can measure it on the stick. It has that little um, measurement tool on the butter. All right, so we got our mushrooms. We got our cloves of garlic, which is four cloves of garlic. That's that, right? And then we got, uh, we're gonna be using heavy cream. I must be I actually have one open. Use your FIFO first in, first out. Yeah. Use that. Yeah, because this one is October. We're gonna use this, I'm sure, for something else. Pro tip. Pro tip, pro streamer, pro chef, five star. Right, that's right. <laughs> so yeah, we're gonna use this one first. This was from last week. And it's still good. It's still good till September 17th, but it's not gonna make it past today. That's the difference. It's not gonna make it past today. All right, so I got some, some natural chicken breast from the market, right? And you can buy it. You can buy chicken breast, any, any kind of chicken breast. It doesn't matter. I like natural chicken breast because it's the chicken breast that doesn't have like all the hormones and stuff in it. So that's what I buy. I bought this for like six pieces for like $12. Not bad at all. Especially if you like feeding a little, little family. Six pieces is enough. Because the way we're going to prepare it and put it on a plate, trust me, one chicken breast is not for one person. It's going to be like two people per chicken breast. Right? So I'm going to get a bowl. We're gonna put our chicken right in here because we're gonna clean the chicken. Clean the chicken, please clean the chicken. Okay, what you do? You buy chicken, clean it, rinse it. I don't care how fresh it looks. How clean it looks. Always clean your chicken. 
clean the meat. Be very very careful um, when you're dealing with chicken because salmonella poisoning is real sickness from chicken is real I mean real people can you know it's deadly sometimes so you want to make sure anytime you're dealing with meat you want to make sure 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 that you try to prepare it as fast as possible so it stay under 41 degrees because if it's not under 41 degrees it starts to grow bacteria over 41 degrees and that's the temperature danger zone Okay, so this is fresh out of the refrigerator, so I'm gonna just rinse it really, really well, um, like really quick. It, you don't have to scrub chicken. <laughs> like, Flex, don't don't put Dawn on, on the chicken. <laughs> so you're gonna put some cold water on there. We're just gonna rinse it. <laughs> What's up, Hala? Hey, hey, hey. How are you? Hold up, Mac. I see you saying something. So we just rinse that off real quick. Right? Let's uh, <laughs> make sure. Thank God for garbage disposals. Okay. <laughs> uh, links here. I'm doing really good, Holla. Thank you so much for showing up. Is this your first cooking stream, Mala? We love people who have your first cooking stream. <laughs> That's what you need. That is it. No Kamala or Dawn on the meats. Okay? All you gotta do is finesse them with a little water. That's it. That's it. So we got some ingredients, some ingredients to put into this chicken. Let's, let's pat it a little bit more. So we're gonna season it first, right? Oh yeah, you've seen the game. Yeah, I've seen you in gaming, but this is the first cooking show, so we got a first timer, y'all. We need to create a button for first timers. <laughs> it's so good to see you here. I'm usually in your stream. Um, make sure we give a shout out for how look to see if you have him already. Um, he was playing grounded last time I saw him. Lex was playing grounded too. Was they, everybody, was that, yeah, everybody was on grounded the last time I was actively watching. Usually I cut it on and be like, sleep. Yeah. You're gonna be hungry, so I hope you bought your taste buds and a snack because you'll probably be hungry before the end of the stream. <laughs> Just saying. Thank you so much for pulling up. We appreciate you being here. Everybody, thanks for the, the host, the follows, the subs, all that good stuff. Mm -hmm. So, starting this off, we're gonna get some flour, right? Gotta go in the pantry. Gotta go in the pantry, get some flour, right? Can't do this without. So, we're gonna put about a cup of flour in here. Get a little bit more. use this later so we'll salt and pepper this now always salt and pepper your flour oh thanks Hal. I appreciate it and once again y'all I always use pink Himalayan salt right because pink Himalayan salt has 32 trace minerals that resonate with the human body so if you're in depletion of a small, the smallest mineral that you're not getting every day, I'm laying salt will replenish that, trust me. I cook every day with it. Breakfast, lunch, dinner, sometimes dessert, right? 
the salt does go into baking some. All right, so we got that. A little flour. So just a little flour. Just give it a little salt and pepper. You don't need a lot of stuff because at the end of the day, what's going to make the dish is the what? The sauce. So in this pan, we're going to put some salt and put some salt on our chicken. We got about six pieces here, so we're going to give enough so it can taste good. Right? The salt, pepper. Oh, it's good to see you here, Howard. It's good, everybody. Thank you so much. Give us some pepper. Not too much pepper because we don't want our chicken to be looking like all. So we're gonna do some garlic powder, um, a teaspoon of garlic powder. Right, that's about a teaspoon. Got your black pepper. We're gonna do a little bit of oil. Just give it a little bit of oil. You don't always have to use olive oil. You can just use a little bit of oil. Just a little bit, not a lot. Of <laughs> That's right, Nova, some thick sauce. All right? And then we're going to use some butter. So usually we start our pan off with oil. We're not doing that. We're going to start it off with butter. And now we're going to pull out our trusty um, range. Pull out the trusty range. Bam. I'm gonna lift this up a little bit. Bam. So you can see. Thank you for the host, Mac. Thanks everybody for the host. Spreading the word because we cooking up here. You know what I'm saying? Alright, so we got. Hey Nova, I noticed that we're on just chatting. Um, we're actually cooking now. Can you change that to food and drink, please? Please, thank you. So we got our little range, my little thing. I take this everywhere. Like, somebody wants something to cook. They're like, can you cook us something? I'm like, sure, I'll bring my range. <laughs> All right, so we're gonna bring out the, the flat top. Bring up the flat top. Not to support. Thank you so much, Hilda. I appreciate it. All right, Matt. So, I'm gonna move our little here. We're gonna burn the stuff up. All right. So, we wanna make sure the pan is hot. And usually we, we start it hot, hot. We're not gonna do hot hot today because we're using butter. So we're gonna just kind of warm it up a bit and I'll be right back. Sure this pan is hot but not too hot you don't want it too hot you just want to put two tablespoons of butter in there right but because we make it six pieces it's going to be like six tablespoons while we're waiting for that i'm just gonna make me a little drink drink no alcohol no alcohol while I'm cooking, it's like, you gotta be ready. You gotta be ready to You gotta be crazy to be cooking with alcohol. It's fun, but me, and knowing me, I'm a very sensitive person when it comes to alcohol and stuff. I'm like, what the hell is she doing? Yeah, so I, I just don't need to go there. 
But sometimes, if I do enjoy some of my wine, it's usually red wine. That's about it. Let's turn this down just a little bit. All right, so we should be ready. Let's get our little chickens and our little tongs. Let's, because I'm not touching the chicken, because I'm still messing the vegetables and all kind of stuff. So just mix up, just kind of mix up your chicken. It's not a lot of ingredients in it, it's just garlic, salt, pepper, right? Pretty much, that's it. So, I think we're gonna change our flour to a plate. Head of GMO chicken, like I've seen some big chicken breasts. I don't understand life right now. I, I don't. I don't understand. How do you get a big chicken breast this goddamn big? How? Where? Like, is a chicken? You almost made me spit my juice out. These size chicken breasts. <laughs> that exactly Nova. Sheesh. What are they doing to us? All right, so we're gonna take our butter. You don't need a lot. Just a little bit, not a lot of it. And this, at this point, it doesn't matter if the if the butter browns because you want that brown butter taste anyway. So we want to slightly brown the butter anyway. You don't need a little bit. No, I love it. I had um, Lex cracking up the other day playing around it. <laughs> that damn song. I say make this shit. <laughs> so um, pretty much I'm gonna show this so, so you guys can see what I'm doing. So we're gonna put this chicken, right? So you're not even, you're not even gonna coat all the chicken. You're just gonna put it on the top and the bottom, right? And you're gonna start to sear it, right? Now you can turn it up because you want a golden brown. You do not want to burn your chicken with flour on it. Trust me. Trust me. So this right here, you want to sizzle, but you want a slow sizzle. <laughs> Never go to the left. <laughs> Don't get me started. <laughs> I'm telling you, I'll always be making some shit. Up. Like this girl. All right, so that chicken is cooking. And we're gonna get a pan to make sure that it is cooking. Because we're gonna put it in the oven. So I always tell you guys, just get like a pan and put some foil on it. Make your life easy. Don't just put it straight on the pan, never, ever. You can foil the pan, foil the pan because it saved you so much time on scrubbing dishes later. I mean, I have a dishwasher, but still, even in that order, I'm like, no, I'm not doing it. It's just not. So just put a couple pieces of oil on there. You don't even have to spray it because the oil from the chicken, I mean, the butter from the chicken is gonna keep it Put the white flour and stuff. Just make sure. 
make sure You just want a nice little brown on it. You don't even want it all the way brown. Just a, the littlest bit of brown. Where though you have that little, it's a crust on top of it. It's a little crust. Not cooking it like shrimp. You won't cook it on both sides, but you don't want too much of a crust crust. And if you gotta add a little bit more butter just to, you know, bring it to the side. Soak it up. At that point, this is done. Done. The other side has that little crust on it. That's all you're doing. If you're gonna finish this in the oven. You guys notice I finish a lot of stuff in the oven. It's easy to do that. One, you searing it so you're locking in the juices and then while you're doing that, locking in the juices and we're gonna wipe this off because you don't want that flour on the next piece of chicken. Just like just like always. So I wipe my pans off, get rid of that excess flour, turn this down a little bit. Ooh, look at that pan. Kids Bob. <laughs> They're gonna steal it. Butter and bacon always make better. Mm -hmm. Bacon makes everything better. Alright, so some more butter. Yummy yummy. And the tummy. See, there I go, making up some more chips. That's what I'm talking about. It, it's never ending, guys. It's never ending. I don't stop. <laughs> I don't stop. Anything better than bacon is warm. It is it. More bacon. Always need bacon. Guys, I'm going to show you guys how to make omelets. One more. With extra bacon. Extra dextra bacon. The pan is on fire. What's up, Natalie? How are you? What's going on? If you guys don't know, Natalie is my sister. She's almost my twin. Yep, Natalie is the sis. Come here, peeking. <laughs> Natalie is older than I am by one year. She's the best. All right, while that's getting this little crust, Natalie, I was telling them about. Um, our great grandmother's apple tree. <laughs> One day, um, my brother was sitting under the tree, and he was just just sitting under the rocking chair, just playing a little game or something. He was doing something. I don't know what. He did. And a uh, apple fell from the tree, bloop, right on his lip, busted his lip, and that was it. Me and my sisters laughed for weeks. <laughs> Weeks, and my brother is one of those type of brothers that always is like spiteful. So when something happens to him, we all like. <laughs> Look, that's the rival. <laughs> no, I love my sister. All right, let's see. Cross, got a cross, y'all. 
got a crust. Bam. Got another crust. That tree was dangerous. Apples falling everywhere. But yes, my grandma used to make the best apple pie out of that tree. She had like blueberries, zucchini, eggplant, carrots, and collard greens, and cabbage. Anything else I can think? And squash. Green squash, yellow squash. We had bell peppers, yellow peppers, orange peppers, green peppers. Yeah. My grandma had a garden. Fresh ingredients. She had garlic. She had strawberries. She had all different types of just just goodness. All types of goodness. Alright. Oh. You can never get close to the strawberries never because um there was these little bees or flies or whatever they were and they wouldn't let you get close to it if you would go into the if you would go into the strawberry patch they would attack you <laughs> they would so we used to look at the strawberries like oh my god they look good but then it would be these little bees just, just flying around it. Just waiting for us to come over there. Just waiting. I used to cry. I got stung by one before. But it's a lot of memories. When it comes to food, it's a lot of memories. Especially with my grandmother and my mother and my father. My siblings. We have weird, we did weird things with food. Me and my siblings, yeah, we did. <laughs> Crazy nonsense. Silly. Yep, the grapevine. I, I used to argue with Natalie all the time because I used to tell her they were blueberries. And they weren't blueberries, they were grapes. They were Concord grapes. So I used to always tell them it was blueberries. I'm like, no, they're blueberries. I just knew it was. They're blueberries. No, they were Concord grapes. So one day, she was like, somebody went and told on me and told me I kept calling them blueberries. And my grandma broke my heart and told me that they're not blueberries, that they're Concord grapes. <laughs> But the actual blueberries I never ate. It's so weird. The blue, the actual blueberries I never knew was blueberries. I just knew the grapes were blueberries, and they weren't. So yeah, she did have blueberries. She had grapes, blueberries. Yeah, I, I'm the baby. I was, I'm, I'm the baby. I'm the baby of four. So I was spoiled until then. But yeah, cooked blueberries. It's still blueberries. To me now. But those strawberries, oh no. I mean, you guys talking about, we had okra. And I blame me not liking okra on my grandma for that. Because I don't know how she made the okra. I don't know if all okra is this way or all made the same, however that works. But it was slimy. And I was like, no. No, Grandma. Bad Grandma. <laughs> Won't you ever give me that shit? So, that was the first and last time I've ever tasted oak. I was so mad at my Grandma. <laughs> for that. I was like, did she really give me that? What the hell is that? It was just like the, the texture and the taste. I remember it like it was yesterday, and I was just like, no. Is that food? What the hell are you doing? <laughs> and she was just sitting there eating a whole bowl of it with rice. Grandpa eating it. My sisters and brothers looking around the corner like, she ain't eating it. I ain't. Oh, so all the okra is slimy. Oh, see. So that's not in my bubble. No. 
chicken is done but when I'm playing with chicken breast that large I don't play with it it has to be 165 degrees because I am feeding my daughter for me I could just be like okay the shit is done it's, it's done but when it when I'm feeding my kids well my kid when I'm feeding her I want to make sure that it's safe for her so it has to be cooked at 165 degrees if it's not you need to put it back in the oven and to begin in the thickest part of the meat The thickest part of the meat. Not the thinnest part of the meat, the thickest part of the meat. Because you can't tell if it's done on the flat end. Alright, so we got this going, right? So for, for our risotto, we're gonna whip out. We're gonna whip it and whip it good. We're gonna whip out the chicken broth. Put the chicken broth right in there. I say about about a half, about a cup, about three quarters of a cup. Right? Let that come to a simmer. And what I have here is a little baggie, <laughs> a little baggie of a uh, risotto, saborio rice. I'm gonna get like a little. That just blows on me like the outside. She's on stage, so I don't get so sweaty. A cold back. <gasps> Nelly, I'm shocked. <laughs> oh my God, Natalie, you better not leave. Um, don't forget to leave that. <laughs> Natalie deleted yourself. How about that? Um, we better not leave. So yeah, we just gonna bring this to a, a roll of summer. You see my sibling? Yeah. So with that statement, you can understand what we talk about on the other one. Bunch of All right, so that's on a roll and boil. We're gonna put our arborio rice right in here. And the trick to this is to keep it moist, okay? Gotta keep it moist, gotta keep it going. So we put chicken stock in there. That's gonna be the flavor in the rice, right? So you're gonna put it, you put your salt and pepper in now. Now we're just gonna keep feeding it chicken stock as it's cooking. Whip out the trusty old red spatula. Rubber spatula. It matches my apron. Just a little bit, not a lot. It's all. So you gotta cook this. It's not like regular rice. You actually can cook some white rice or brown rice the same way. 
but this is different because this is a, a thicker grain of rice so you have to keep it moist but you can't submerge it you cannot submerge this rice and you don't want to put too much so we got about a, we're gonna add to this about a cup of <clears throat> chicken stock and the rest will be water okay Cup of water because if you add too much, if you add too much chicken stock, it'll be salty. In here. So I have that start cooking, and this is the longest process of this dish is making the risotto. So we're gonna parmesan this risotto at the end. Just a little bit more. That's about it. We're gonna let it cook and cook and cook. Now we can add a little bit more water to it. Let it simmer for a little bit. Let's turn this up. So you gotta watch this. This process is very, very important. Um, not to submerge the rice into too much water because it gets starchy. And you'll have some some really thick rice at the end. You don't want that. You want your rice to be, if you spread it out on aluminum foil and let it cool and you pick it up, it can crumble. That's the consistency you're looking for when you're cooking it. But because we're gonna go straight into it, we're not cooling it or anything like that. We're gonna go straight into the cream, straight into the cheese, all that good stuff. Straight in there. Now it doesn't take hours to cook this. You just gotta, you, you can't really take your eyes off of it. You just gotta keep stirring it. Now, depending on how you like it, some people do like mushy um, risotto. So if you ever went to a restaurant and they had risotto on the menu, you can ask them um, for extra cooking of the risotto. Because usually in the back, they'll have it cooled down somewhere and when they, when they put it in the pan with the cream and everything and they whip it up so fast. So you can ask them to cook it more than usual. You can have it al dente. Some people take it off right now. It depends, it depends on which one. So that's our green. And you want to cook this until it's a little translucent. As long as you can see the little white in the middle of the rice, it's not enough. Not for me. But if you guys ever make this rice, you'll, you'll, get, you'll have your own consistency. How you like it. So as you can see the bubbles coming through, that means the, the, the liquid is drying out. So, once you see the bubbles, you have to add more water. So that's the trick, that's the key to make risotto. Once you see the consistent bubbles, it's kind of like pancakes. When you make pancakes and you get the bubbles and then it becomes a little dry on the other side, then you flip it. Same kind of concept. But you want a consistent bubble all the way through. Like right now, it's not even ready. It's still none here. Just let it cook. I love making risotto. I love making mushroom risotto. Yeah, that, that's good. I love, we'll make some butternut squash risotto in the fall. We'll make some pea risotto. This summer, um, that's a summer dish. So we'll, we'll probably do some pea risotto um, before the summer is out. Next week, I wanna do, um, I was watching MP Deluxe stream the other day and she was eating watermelon and I love watermelon oh my god so I was like girl you're making me want some watermelon so I went out the other day and I got watermelon and I ate it and I was like oh you know what I think you guys would like the watermelon caprese salad it's like half you can use it two ways you can use it as a dessert and you can use it as like an appetizer it's so good all right so there's our dry bubbles and more water I'm just so happy that you guys have never seen these things done before because now you have. Now if somebody say risotto, you'd be like, risotto? I know how to cook risotto. <laughs> That's how I get it. I see somebody cook something one time and then they're like, I, I know how to cook it. <laughs> the 
banana was really nice. All right, so we're gonna wait for our bubbles again. Once again. No bubbles. So you're waiting for a simmer like this, right? So this is a simmer, right? But we want the dry simmer. So right now, so the bubbles are too wet. So we want the, the dry simmer. So you gotta you gotta put the liquid in and then you gotta let it boil out. Then you gotta put the liquid in and let it boil out until the rice is cooked. So at this point, this is almost done. Actually, you can taste the piece of it. No, it's not done. It's still crunchy. So we got about maybe a couple minutes on it. Five minutes maybe? Yeah, like grits, but grits are cooked different. Cook a little bit, yeah. So we're getting that dry bubble again. Getting that dry simmer. Yep, that's it. Now we're gonna add more water. Now you gotta make it wet again. You gotta finesse it. Now, if you guys can see from the start, the rice has already um, plumped up, right? It's already, it's already plumped. So it's getting it. If you notice it's a little more creamier now than it was. Sometimes I even like to take the starch out of it. Just so it doesn't get starchy, keep adding the water and taking out the starch. So I'll just go ahead and force it to go back to a dry simmer, taking out the starch, and more water. So that's the trick. So if you're ever making risotto, at some point, you wanna take out some of the starch. So you can get that nice dry consistency of rice in the end. So if you were ever to cool it down and use it for the next day, you could. And it won't be starchy or pasty. You see, I took the starch out, and now you can start you're starting to see the rice. So this is the starch. This is what you don't want. So you just want to take all of that out. That's what makes it pasty. So you take that out, maybe one or two times, depending on how it looks. You'll have a really, really pretty rice. Because we're going to add cream to it and cheese to it, so we don't need that starch flavor. Just making it look like mashed potatoes. Not a lot of it. There we go. Let's try again. Add some more water. See? Now it's not as starchy. See how that see how we flip the script on it? It's always the little tricks. It's always the little tricks. Alright. Now we're gonna we're gonna de-starch it again. So if somebody had this recipe, you'll have the recipe, but it's the technique that the chef uses is what's gonna make the difference of why mine doesn't look like props. Because you didn't do this. You know what I'm saying? So those are the key things that I, I would like to add to um, recipes. I don't always see those type of techniques added to normal recipes, but mine will have. Well, why is my rice pasty? Because you didn't de-starch. DJ South, thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the round table. 
we're all here cooking and talking and reminiscing. Sometimes we play games. My name is Rock. A little bit of Peach. You know, we got Lex, we got Natalie, we got Nova, we got Mac in there somewhere. So welcome, welcome to the stream. Happy Monday. We're cooking it up. Go. All right, so I'm not satisfied with the starching, so I'm gonna take a little bit out again. Not a lot of it, because we do need some of it to stay. All right, at this point, we're gonna taste a little bit more. Just, just a little grain of it. You don't need a whole lot. So we're gonna let this cook down to a dry simmer again. And this time we are gonna add, we are going to add the heavy cream. Shake your heavy cream. See how it's coming out now? Ooh, look at that. Ooh, look at that. See that? If we haven't, if we didn't take out the starch, it would not be this this crumbly. It wouldn't be this uh, easy. It would be like a paste. And you'll be eating a lot of starch with the dish when we can be taking all that out and adding cream and flavor. Right? So now we're going to dry that all the way up. Kind of looks like no, it don't look like Uncle Ben's. Like, no Uncle Ben's. But it kind of looks like, you know, white rice, but it's not. It's, it's a totally different rice. It's a thick grain rice. Used in a lot of Italian dishes, Mexican dishes, different, uh, different cuisine. Mostly Italian. I see a lot of Italian dishes um, with this type of rice. I still want to completely dry it out without burning the pan. You gotta keep it moving to dry it out like this. It's a little tough to dry it out because, you know, at first you're gonna be like, oh God, I'm gonna burn it. No, you ain't gonna burn it. As long as you have your fire low enough, you will not burn. You will not, even as you go, even as you go, uh, you will not burn your rice. Once you get that simmer, that's it. You get it? That's it. That's what you want. That means it's completely dry. All right. So now we're gonna add the cream. And we're gonna bring it back to life. Ooh. So we're gonna add about half a cup of cream at first. Aborio rice. It's called it, the name of it is Aborio rice, but it's called rice, but we're making it into risotto. To a risotto dish. So when you pick it up in the store, it'll be Aborio rice or they'll they call it risotto in, in the store too. Yeah, so this is what you want right here. My little shake. A little thick right there. Just a little thick. Not a lot thick. At that point, we're gonna take this off. We're not even gonna add the cheese yet. We're not even ready for that. So far from that. So we're gonna put that to the side, right? And then we're gonna start the sauce. Let's get our 
my steamy pan. All right. So before we get the pan, I put on some water back there, but I didn't need it. So I always keep a pot of water boiling. I don't know. You never know. You never know what you need until you need it. All right. So now we're going back. To our little mushrooms while our chicken somebody's like what about the chicken yeah what about the chicken it ain't done yet so we're gonna stop these slice these why and we're gonna put them into a nice little bowl on the side because we're gonna we're gonna saute these down No thick slices on your marsala mushrooms. Trust me, you want nice thin slices in that bowl. My whole finger would be on the board trying. <laughs> that should be over there like this. One slice. Hold up, hold up, hold up. Two slice. <laughs> Look, everybody starts slow. Okay? Slow and steady wins the race. Be like, no, 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 no. Always to the left, never go to the right. Cha -cha 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 -cha. <laughs> yeah. Cooking slow is, is, is much better because you don't want to run, you don't. You never have that those are too thick. Um, you never have to rush your food. Those were too thick. Right? Okay. What's up, cat? <laughs> how you doing? Yes, sir. So how I did um VIPs, and I think it was the fairest of things. Um I pretty much picked um people who um, who have the highest tier of subs, um, so they got the VIPs first, and then I picked the people who have reoccurring subs second. Um, so I, I think that was the fairest way. I, I didn't, I don't like to play favorites, but a VIP is a VIP. You know? VIPs are VIPs. I wish I could give all subs VIPs, but it, the way Twitch is, um, you know, set up, Tried to do it the fairest of ways, guys. They only give you 20. I'm like, 20? Don't you know I know more than 20 people? Don't you know more than 20 VIPs? They don't let you, um, they don't let you, um, give subs VIPs either. Because they're, I mean, um, mods VIPs either because they're already kind of pretty much VIP when they come in they already have their their badge you know oh my day is going great we are making some chicken marsala with risotto I want to saute some spinach and it's gonna be good yes all right so we're gonna bring out our trusty trusty old guy here sorry y'all there we go how you doing, Kat? How's your streams been going? Yeah, it's always good to see every last one of you guys. You guys are like the best. So this time, we're gonna make the sauce. Sauce. We're gonna heat that up, but this time we're gonna hurry up and put the butter in because we don't want it to brown. Hurry up and put the butter in. Teaspoons. A butter. One tablespoon of butter. This, this is two teaspoons. I pre-cut it. Two teaspoons, one tablespoon. Alright? So we're going to turn this down. We don't want to brown it. Though at the end, we're going to add more butter. 
because we don't follow rules. <laughs> I'm chilling. Oh, wow. I saw a meme the other day, and, and it was like, everybody else in the world is like, um, quarantine, oh my God, I don't know what to do with myself. And then gamers are home or like, we live for this shit. <laughs> we have a game. We... The outside world don't exist sometimes. When we're playing away. All right, so we want to just melt our butter, right? Then we're going to quickly add the mushrooms before it browns. Before. You don't want no, no nutty flavor into the dish. So let's get our spatula right there. Right. We're gonna get our, our whisk and our other red spatula. <laughs> yeah, so it's like, who cares? Take me out of work for two weeks. Whatever. So when you're doing mushrooms, you don't want to put a lot of fat into them. You want them to cook down because they're going to cook down the water content in them. It's going to create the moisture for the pan anyway. So you don't need to, you can actually cook mushrooms without butter or whatever, but the butter is part of the recipe. It's part of the gloss, the thick, all that. So we're going to put butter in. We're going to cook these down. And we're not going to brown these. We're just going to cook them down. We're just going to sweat them. Won't sweat. Just gonna sweat them. like that sometimes. Sometimes you're busy. You know? You know? Life happens. Alright, so this is a sweat, guys. This is, this is it. You want a nice, pretty mushroom. You, want, you don't want it to put down to So at that point, well, no. we're going to add about three quarter cup of myself one. Well, matter of fact, wait. we're going to do our garlic. We're going to sweat our garlic. We don't follow Bam. Almost, almost time for the We're gonna sweat our garlic in there with it. <sighs> Smells so good. Yes, the wine. There we go. Got our garlic, and I'm gonna add the wine. Three quarter cup of wine. A little bit more. Just a little bit more. Because remember, we got six pieces of chicken. So we gotta make sure our chicken is good to go. Let's do some. some of the chicken juice off of there because I want them to cook not sweat I'm going to turn that up to 375 and let it dry out just a little bit more yes chicken breast Cap's looking like what the hell are we doing here okay so now I'm going to add just a little bit of chicken broth not a lot. Not a lot of it. Only a quarter of a cup. That's enough right here. I like you to. I like how I measure with my eyes. It's it's a gift. It's, it's a real gift. I'm telling you, it's a gift. to be able to measure things with your eyes. I can pull out 
the measuring cup, but what use is it? We're not making like a quick vid here where we gotta show cups. All that, no, we cook them. We cook it from the brain. And I have my ingredients because those are basic ingredients of what you put in there, but you know. All right, that's simmering just a little bit. that simmer out. Usually it may or may not have an alcohol content, so I'm just gonna see. Because the alcohol content is so small. Yeah, we're good. Well trust me, if it was hot a lot, we'll catch. That is it. Is it? So we're good on our wine. That's why it's cooking wine. It shouldn't have to burn off any alcohol. I just like to test it anyway, because I don't know what they be doing with my wine. They could have put 25% in there and don't tell me. I don't know. <laughs> All right, so now we're gonna add Just a little bit of cream, three quart, three fourth cup of cream. Mm -hmm. Yummy, yummy. Well, we're done. Thank you so much for the follow. Welcome to the stream. Welcome to the round table. All of our shenanigans. So we're gonna let that cook down. And I'm gonna add some more wine. Because it does call for a three quarter cup of water. But I don't wanna put water, I wanna put extra wine. Right? Because we don't follow rules. We follow ingredients, but we don't follow rules. Chefs don't follow rules. Petro. <laughs> right, Pat? See, so we got a cup. Mm -hmm. I'm gonna give me a nice wine cup and just fill it with juice every time. Just fill it. I think so. And I'll eat grape juice. <coughs> I'm going too far. This is nonsense. Just don't, don't listen to me. All right, so we got that. And then we got our garlic in there. We got our mushrooms in there. We got everything in there. We got the chicken stock in there. Happy cream. A little bit melt. Cool, cool. So we're gonna add some salt and pepper to that mixture. I love cracked flat. Yup, exactly. That's why my favorite meme is Julia Child. I used to watch Julia Child ungodly. She used to put me to sleep. I used to wake up to her. I used to go to bed to her. It just was. I always used to just watch her. Always. Channel 12, W-H-Y-Y. -Y. Yes. I used to always watch her. And her favorite quote was, I love cooking with wine. Sometimes I put it in the food. Okay, Julia. I get it. <laughs> Jimmy Crackhorn. Jimmy Crackhorn. And I don't care. Mm-hmm. Love Julia Child. My favorite modern chefs were the Neelys. Oh, I used to love the Neelys. They don't really show them anymore. I think something went, I don't know. Yeah. Hey, True. All right, so we let that go down a little bit, and then we're gonna add that extra three quarter cup of water. Learning. <laughs> sure, guy. What's up? How are you? Name the nerve of this woman. 
<laughs> we're gonna turn that up just a little bit not a lot of it and we're gonna make our little water and flour mixture of course I can use roux but that's why I don't use the water because I don't want to use the water the flour mixture so you gotta compensate for certain things at certain times so the water I took out, I replaced it with wine so I can add it in later with the flour so I don't have to make a roux. Does that make sense? <laughs> well, your choice words will have to wait till after this to get this. Because... Oh, mm, so good. All right, so we got flour. Let's get our flour again. It's, uh, Natalie had choice words for us already. Thanks, Natalie. All right, so just a little bit of flour. Not a lot. A little bit of water. And we're going to take our little spoon here. A little bit more water. I want pancake mix. Actually, you might want pancake mix. You don't want it to be too much water. So, just going to... Mix that a little bit. Hey, Lee! Oh my God! I miss you more. <laughs> How you haven't seen somebody in so in forever? Hi, Flea. How are you? Guess what, y'all? It's Flea's first time to a cooking show. <laughs> We love first timers. How you doing, Flea? I know. Flatty was telling me you've been working a lot. So we're gonna add a little bit more cream, y'all. He told me you were working a lot and one he told me one day you'll get here. And I believed it. And you're here. We're all here enjoying it. And I'm so happy that you're here. So happy to see your face. So remember guys. When you're doing this mixture here, you have to use the strainer. So, catch those little bumps right there. Bam. And then you're gonna use the whisk this time. And we're gonna pick it up the sauce. Mm -hmm. Sauce. Sauce. Anyway. Sauce. Just some thick sauce. I'm gonna let it cook. Oh yeah. Just some thick, 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 thick sauce. <laughs> the button comes in handy. Finally. <laughs> Please. Oh, I missed the y'all. All right, so it's a little thick. I'm gonna add some cream. We're gonna turn this off and we're gonna add a little more wine. Truth, don't be a party pooper. <laughs> Damn. Sauce. Sauce. Check on chicken. really juicy. Oh my god. <laughs> I'm just messing through. Um Stop 
story of our lives. <laughs> Truth. <laughs> story of our lives, Lee. We all are hungry. Everybody comes hungry, super duper hungry. And they leave super duper hungry. <laughs> Truth be silly. Um, all right, so that's it for the whisk. Can y'all see that? So, oh my god. Oh my god. You see that gloss? Can you see? Can you see the gloss? Can, can you see the thick? Oh my god. Woohoo. Now that's Marsala sauce. Marsala. Anybody who makes the dark sauce, that's red wine sauce. Not my sauce. Don't get it twisted. So we're gonna put that over there. And what we're gonna do is we're gonna bring back the risotto and we're gonna cheese it up and we're gonna plate it up. We're gonna get our plate. Let's see what plate we're gonna use. Let's use the pasta bowl. I use this for salad, pasta, risotto, soup. Yeah, it's my favorite bowl. Anything you can dig into, that's the bowl. So are you sending me some? I wish I could send everybody some. I'll tell you my dream again. I know you guys heard this a thousand times that I wish that I had a studio with me cooking, and my studio audience, it's all y'all about to eat some food. That's the dream. Yes. So now, we're gonna cheese it up and then we're gonna we're gonna whip out our seasoning pan and we're gonna spinach it up. Yeah, boy. We're gonna get it going. Alright, so let's put this back. Back to square one. So now this should be like, oh, you see that crumble I was talking about when you cool it down? And it looks like, yes, it's perfect. Oh my lord, that is perfect risotto. Oh yeah, perfect. This is exactly how it looks. So if you wanted to cook this tomorrow, you would just spread it on a sheet pan with the cream in it and everything. And then tomorrow, you'll be able to sprinkle it in the pan just like this and it'll come out just like that. See that? That's how it works. So now, we're gonna add water, not wine, just to thin this back, to bring this back up to a nice little thick consistency. Add a little bit of water back to the cream. That is, you see how that creams right back up? You just add a little bit of water. Who knew? All right, need a little bit more. And this is exactly how you would cook the next day. Just put it in a pan and add water. So now, we're gonna add some Parmesan cheese. I have two different types of Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna add the grated in, that grated Parmesan cheese. I'm gonna add that right in. And this is a fresh ground. I buy from the market. I don't like to use that stuff in the can or the bottle. Good. If not, then it doesn't look good now. <laughs> wow, true. Wow. All right, so we're gonna add that in. We're gonna add about, about a cup of that goodness in there. A lot of cheese. Not a little bit, a lot of bit this time. Gosh. Finally, I said it. She always adding a little bit of something. Why can't we get a lot of it? <laughs> yeah, that isn't cheese. I don't. I don't know what that is. Um, I don't know how you preserve cheese to be put into a bottle like that. And th guys, do you see that cheese starting to to like be sticky? Oh my god! I wish I could taste. So one day, you're gonna have to get up with the ingredients list. Yes, the 
ingredients list and cook with me so you can taste it. You cook it the exact same way I'm cooking it. It's gonna taste the same. I'm gonna make sure you don't fail. Make sure, it tastes the same, I promise. Look at that, see that? That roll right there? See that roll on it? That's what's over. That is, that's it, like, man. Look at that, you see how that, look at that. Look, it can roll, that's it. That's what you do. Damn. Yes. So, that's it for that. We're gonna salt and pepper. We're gonna mix it, we're gonna taste it. We can add, at the end, a little bit of garlic powder. Okay, just a little bit. We back off a lot of it. And enough cheese. Okay. Um, you can also use, um, I use home style Parmesan cheese. This stuff here, shredded cheese. Right on your tomato. That's just adding the bold flavor to the end. Yeah. You want cheese that's like ooey gooey a little bit. It's not gonna be ooey gooey like mozzarella, you don't want that. But it should have that ooey gooeyness. Look at that. Perfect. It's perfect. So we can actually go ahead and put this in the pan. Let's pull this. We're done with this, buddy. So we can put her all the way in the bag. And we can bring this camera back. We're not cooking anymore. My little camera holds up against heat. Proud of you. <laughs> Nova. Mostly wood. Oh. Oh my god. That stuff is horrible. Alright, so. We're gonna, let's cut the chicken first. How about that? So we're gonna bring the chicken over. Make sure you wear your gloves. I mean, I could probably touch it without getting burnt because my fingers are like bad already. Um, I just wanna show y'all the safe way. So we got this chicken, right? Just, just, just cut it. We're actually not done with the, um, we're actually not done. Let's. We got a spinach. We're not done. Bam. Quick, quick. Really quick. I mean, super quick. One spinach. I'm using so many pans, my daughter's gonna be like, what? <laughs> She's like, what the fuck, mom? use all these pans because we need to we get to season pan <laughs> that chicken good right all right let's, uh, let's bring this back up because we don't want to our camera get too high there we go. we're gonna spin it real quick so this time we're gonna use olive oil use the last little bit we got here get this in there. Gonna use our last little bit I really want to clean this bottle out. After every use, I try to clean it, bring it back to life, you know, all that good stuff before I put new stuff in. This time, I want to I want to get a really, really good extra virgin olive oil to go in that bottle, like something that we got to like dab in there because it's so cute. So, all you got to do is get you a bag of spinach. You don't need, you don't need to go to the farmer's market and buy a whole thing of spinach it all day and I'm using baby spinach. Baby spinach is the best. Okay. So I'm gonna start off with that sliced garlic. Bring the temperature back in. Get our tongs. And when I tell y'all this is gonna be fast, it's gonna be fast. So bring that off. You don't want you don't want your garlic to Right, that's a thick piece. You don't want that. I oh, know it's not stuff together. Alright, so we don't want to brown it too much. We just wanna there you go. That's enough. There you go. 
up with the spinach. Let's give it a little bit more. Uh, a tad bit of oil. So you want to brown the garlic, but you don't want to burn the garlic. So you're going to turn this down. When I tell you, you can turn this pan off and cook the spinach and it's done. Wait a minute. Keep the spinach. Do not cook it. You just want to wilt. You don't want to cook it. It needs to have some life in it at the end. It needs to have some good life. What's the point if it's not no life? That's it. You're done. You're done. You're done. Done with it. Done with it. I got a lot of stuff around. Like my whole kitchen is like swing pans. All right, so we're gonna get a nice piece of chicken in a second. Now we're done. Let's bring this back down so we can see, 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 see where we be, be. See, that's where I'm gonna make it up. See. Make enough shit. Just make enough shit. Okay. Alright, so we're gonna turn it this way. I'm gonna bring it back just so y'all can see. And we're gonna taste the chicken. Damn. I'm gonna take like two pieces. Yes. And I'm gonna get them. I'm gonna get a bone and knife. The bone and knife bins, right? So you want some clean. I usually use a carving knife, which I should be You know what? Let's use the proper tools. Let's use the proper tools. Hey. So you got a carving knife. And it's just straight. It bends as well. That's why I like the, the knife they bend. Um, so Safety first, <laughs> right? What we love is it. All right, so we're gonna cut this on a bias, okay? You don't want to cut your chicken straight down. Don't do it. If you want this look, to look nice, you want to cut it on a bias, okay? And you don't want to use the end piece. You can, but you don't want to. So you're gonna start here, and we're gonna go like on a slant. So we're going like this. We're not going like this. We're going like this. We're going on the side. So we're going on the bias. And you gotta keep that knife moving. That's why it's a carving knife. All the way to the bottom. Because we want to be able to fan that chicken out from top. Alright? And this is why I don't use the bottom piece. Except for that right here. It gets a little little iffy. I don't think we're gonna use two pieces of chicken. I'm just gonna put this back. I was just kidding. <laughs> I got excited, okay? <laughs> Let me get that end piece. I know that's right. That end piece is the good piece. You can actually cut that and just take a bite. <laughs> okay. All right. Then take our little bowl. Wipe it out again because it's kind of quick. All kind of little stuff around it. We're gonna cook on it and it got splashed with grease. Alright, so we're good. Now, I'm gonna take this, put our chicken on the plate because this chicken gets messy. So, we're gonna get rid of this board. We're gonna get rid of the board. We'll get rid of this board and this little towel. Clean as you go. But if I took a picture of the kitchen, you'll be like, 
That's because we're moving. All right. So we can save our spinach for Wednesday. Because we're going to do stir fry on Wednesday. We're going to visit an Asian dish on Wednesday. All right, so here you go. It's like so ooey gooey. I gotta like bring it up out the pan. You don't have to be so uniform like I am. I'm just a perfectionist. You can you can swap it. No, don't. <laughs> you want it to look good. Though. Like, see this little thing, this little piece, this right here. Well, it, it, it bothers me. Yeah, so you gotta clean it. I'm telling you, can you guys imagine me in a restaurant at the the landing and people's food coming past me? Just a minute. So now we got our lovely spinach. We got a lovely spinach. That's not too wilted. Look how green that is. See the garlic all mixed in there? So guys, we're going past the two hour mark if you don't mind. I'm sure y'all don't mind. All right, and then we're going to add our lovely chicken. Dessert? We're gonna start dessert next week. Next week. I have to get a um I have to get a mixer. So we're definitely gonna go shopping for that next week. Well, this weekend, actually. Not next weekend, this weekend. So next week we will be able to do a dessert. And I've been waiting to do this. Um next week. Why? I can hear you say it. So we get our little sauce. Sauce. My cat going crazy again. Last week he was going crazy, now he's really going. Alright, so look at that sauce. Oh my god. So we want to get the mushrooms, right? Alright, so we're gonna put the sauce right on top. Oh my gosh. Let it drip drip. Let it drip drip. Then we're gonna take this sauce. Make sure it drip. Drip drip. <laughs> oh my god. Let's move this over a little bit. So see our Spinach. And we're not garnishing too much. All you're gonna do is take a nice little sprig of parsley. And just put it right on top. You don't, need, you don't need much for this. And that's it. That's it. That's it. I promise. It's not a lot. I love it.
So that's it, guys. Easy stuff. Easy. The easiest stuff in the world. So what do you guys think about this dish? Oh my god, this the chicken is so juicy. Because we didn't dry it out in the pan. Thank you so much. Oh my god. So can you imagine? Can you imagine? Look at that. Can you imagine going to a restaurant and having this at the restaurant? It's so good. Look at that risotto. It's so good. So we gotta make sure we take a picture because we always forget. So the full filter on my camera allows it to zone in and kind of blur everything around it out. So good. That's enough. Food paparazzi. The hell? The hell, man? <laughs> they don't pay me to do that. <laughs> so, any, what are your thoughts on this dish, guys? Because this is super duper easy. I mean, super easy. Super easy. It's, it's way too easy. And it takes a little bit of time for the risotto. Um, it takes a little bit of skill with it. Um, sauces are sauces. Once once you guys realize how I cook sauces, it's kind of always the same way depending on what kind of wine or what, kind of, what ingredients we're using. My thought is give me some. <laughs> oh my God. I don't know. Truth, my first dish that I um, cooked on stream, they were like, just eat it, just taste it. How does it taste? And I'm like, I just ate it and I was like, I, I didn't take a picture. So I had to remake the dish because my daughter is my sous chef. So she, I pay her to set up the kitchen and break down the kitchen and, you know, kind of help her sometimes. But part of her pay, I pay her every week. Part of her pay is to make sure she gets a dish just the way I cook it. So I was lucky that I had to remake the dish for her anyway and took a picture of it. But this time we got our pictures and we're gonna taste it. Where is my my trusty my magic spoon? This is the magic spoon. I'm telling you. There's something about the spoon that makes everything taste good. Be <laughs> fresh and at your house on Thanksgiving. <laughs> Y'all more than welcome to come to my house. So we're gonna taste the risotto. With that sauce, oh my God. It's one thing to look at it, and it's one thing to taste it. All that love that we just put in there is exactly how I envision it should taste. So you guys gotta, sometimes, not all the time, get your ingredient list and cook it with me because you can taste it at home. <laughs> Amen. Amen for chicken. Amen for a salad sauce, mushrooms, wine, parmesan cheese, heavy cream. Christmas and Easter and Fourth of July and Halloween and President's Day. <laughs> Don't forget the 
birthdays and the peep shenanigans. <laughs> oh my god, damn. Martin Luther King, though? No, she's trying to get every holiday. I, she don't care. She's trying to get Juneteenth, all of that. So now we got the chicken, the spinach, and the dodo. You guys have got to. Got to. I'll put the I'll put the recipe out a week in advance. Just so you guys can go. And we can do like community nights. Maybe once a week where everybody has their stuff. And we just kind of cook together. My birthday, your birthday, everybody in the stream birthday. <laughs> that sounds like a plan. That sounds like a plan. The mushroom's so tender, you barely got to chew it. Just melting, Lord of mercy. Mm. Thanks, y'all. <laughs> I love cooking for y'all. Y'all y'all are so much great company. And y'all keep me laughing, y'all keep me smiling. Y'all keep me coming back to cook with you guys again. It's always awesome. It's always a pleasure. This is like the best company I've ever had. Like, oh my god. I'm talking with my mouth. But yes. Definitely, definitely need to get the list together. Or you get your stuff together if you want to really try it. Grab the ingredients. The ingredients are always going to be in Discord. The ingredients are in Discord right now. Go to Discord. Hey, Kels. One of your favorite dishes? Yes. Oh my God. Go to Discord. Get the ingredients list. Rewatch the stream. And you can taste it. Thank you so much, Kels. I know I'm like digging in now. It's so good. It's so good. Stop eating. Just, just like go away. <laughs> just like go sit down and eat. And eating some soup. So what I'm gonna do is my, my daughter's looking at me like, where's mine? So I'm gonna go ahead. And make her up a little plate. A little platey plate. She be looking at me like it better look like that. Yeah. So she doesn't like the chicken. Let it go. Just go ahead and make her a little plate. I'm like, give me now. And this is safe for you. Kids can eat it because it. It doesn't have the alcohol has cooked out of it so it's not all the time that you're thinking um <laughs> eat up that chef privilege. i know right um it's not all the time that wine is a bad thing when cooking as long as you burn the alcohol out you can give it to children you can you can let them taste it because guess what i'm gonna let my daughter taste everything i make hands down Hands down. So, so she's got, she's got to get my, my, my. Thank you, honey. Um, <laughs> oh. So it's like a little bar table here, and it's like here. <laughs> I'm sitting there like. <laughs> mm -mm. No, it's not. Trash. 
truth. Really? Oh my god. Uh, not in the stomach juices. Yes. Every time I do a stream, my daughter is my live studio on it. She's my sous chef. She takes care of everything. I mean, she does everything. Like, she's really, really, she's really great at it. She sets up my apron. She sets up all the spices according to the recipes. She sets up my boards, my knife, and she's a really tough crowd because she cooks too. <laughs> she's a chef too. And she's critical, just like me. So, next week when it comes to baking, she's really competition. She's a really good baker. Yes. Like my daughter did her first, um, before we left Philly, she did her first wedding cake. It was a a wedding cupcake tower. I'm posting it this way. It was a wedding cupcake tower and she did that and they paid her and it was flawless. My kid is going to be in the kitchen. She's, she's, going, she's going to do this. She's already asking questions about it. She's already, like right now she's sitting in front of the big screen TV and she's watching. Listen. Okay, we might curse here a little bit, but guess what? You can't hear it. She watches it. Because it's gotta be pretty much 18, so I'll log in and she can she can't. Um, but she watches it and she studies. It's like she's studying her mom. She's studying what she needs to do, what she needs to say, how she needs to be, how her persona needs to be, how to cook this, how to it's amazing. It's really amazing for a kid to be able to see this. I didn't see this like this. She's seeing it on a whole different level. A whole nother generation. She's going to be great. That's exactly how my youngest girl is. She the oldest better work. <laughs> yeah. That's how kids are, man. Whatever kids pick up, run with it. Because they only get better from it. Yeah, and she's definitely a tough crowd. So, she is definitely my biggest critic. Mm. That's so good. But guys, it has been lovely, lovely, lovely. You guys coming over to the round table, hanging out. Just shenanigans and all that you all got going on all the time. Which I love so much. I appreciate you guys for all the follows, the posts, everything that you do. Just being here is is the biggest part of my life. Um, to be able to do this for you is immaculate. I actually have some people that, and you guys come back all the time. So, we're doing something right. I ain't burning nothing now. Like, last week, my fire alarm went off. First blooper, first blooper, whatever. I'm gonna chop it up and I'm gonna post it so you guys can see how I reacted. Yep. <laughs> Guess I'll go make some basic dish. <laughs> some oodles and noodles. <laughs> oh God. Yes, Kel, thank you so much. Ruth. Lex, Nola, Link is in there, Natalie's in there, everybody who's been watching. That, that's so funny. Everybody has the same reaction, like I'm sitting here eating Cheerios. This is jerk. <laughs> we're gonna go see who we're gonna go and go and raid. Guess what? Chef Roblay is cooking too. So we're gonna go smash into his place and keep the fun going with the cooking. So, if you guys definitely wanna cook with me, send me a message so I can know that you're cooking with me so I can I have to approach it a different way if, if people are cooking. So just let me know. Yes, Cat. Yes, let's give a shout out for Cat. Everybody who's here, I appreciate you all. We're gonna go over to Chef Roblake 
and thank you thank you again it was a wonderful dish i'm going to post pictures so if you don't have a food section in your discord please add one because i'm looking through the list after the show all the time posting pictures um that way you guys can see because this is what we're doing we're having fun so i'll see you guys next time and until then we'll be back with the asian dish on wednesday at 4 p.m so i'll post everything in the discord thank you guys so much i appreciate it mm -hmm.